Yep, you're all good. Whenever you're ready. All right. Uh, just one second. All right. Starting my speech in three, two, one. All right, panel. So before we begin, let me tell you about the world which in which we live in, right? Now, though this is an extension, this principle will generally apply to the entire world. However, given that, uh, again, check the context, right? This is the presently, this is we are talking about the context of China. Therefore, we, would, we will be primarily talking about China if um, and that is basically what our scope of debate is going to be somewhat restricted to. Now, let's talk about what China actually is, right? China is one of the largest economies in the world where uh, it's basically essentially the manufacturing hub of the world due to the reasons of cheap labor and an export oriented strategy. And that we believe is something which is problematic for the citizens of China, for the urban youth who are uh, basically stakeholders are in this. Our stakeholders, we've limited, uh, I will tell you about that in a moment, right? And what is, why is China in fact the manufacturing hub of the world right now? Because see, now China lives in a relatively authoritarian place where it considers itself to have elections, but again, it is one party where Mr. Xi Jinping has basically political autonomy throughout the country, right? And that basically we believe limits the scope of democratic ideals, right? And what is that important, right? That facilitates the culture where um, Xi Jinping necessarily wants China to be a manufacturing economy and therefore is manipulating the situations where, where that uh, Xi Jinping and the government, the communist government is sort of creating a narrative where, again, if you work hard, working hard is the only premise which is important and you don't need to look at what is good for you. You need to, your and the perception of your success will be restricted to the image of you being able to work hard. It doesn't matter what your outcomes are. It doesn't matter what your potential is. It doesn't matter how good you are at some other aspect, the simple aspect which they've put forth is that you need to work hard. Why? Because that is something which is very good for the manufacturing hub of the world, which is China, right? Many people are dependent on China and cheap labor is a reason for that because this societal obligation which the Communist Party has put for that hard work is important and like all incentives, all motivations are constructed, they are manufactured in a way where uh, like uh, the, the urban youth are sort of being brainwashed to perceive that, you know, their benefits are not important, their compensation is not important, how hard they are exerting themselves, whether it is in their benefit, they don't consider that, they simply consider that I have a societal obligation to work hard, therefore that is my only metric of success which I am to perceive to be so. We believe that that is very problematic because what has that led to? That has led to a 9 to 9 in the sense that a 12 hour work week with six days a week with a person, an urban youth, which is again the manufacturing person who we basically talk about, that is the primary person working 72 hours a week, which is very problematic, we believe. It is not an interest of the urban youth. And now this, with this, I'm coming to the concept of my stakeholders, right? Now, firstly, the first stakeholder which we talk about are democratic ideals, which have a political view attached to it, which I will come and expand on later. The second, we talk about that point of youth who has other aspects, who is better not only in working hard, but working smartly, where they focus more on outcomes, where their, uh, again, abilities focus more on what is better for them in the sense of intelligence, rather than simply, you know, being in a rat race where you're working hard, where essentially you are playing havoc with your mental health, where you have to work like, again, a donkey, right? We don't believe that, we believe that that is the reason why this concept of life flat is very important. And the third stakeholder we talk about is societal welfare and progressive policy in general, right? That is what we basically talk about. And now again, reiterating the burden which we take upon ourselves, we tell you why this concept of lying flat where, again, we sort of move away from this obligation of society which is put forth that society needs to be hardworking and that is the only metric of success and that is the only metric of praise which is within society, right? That is what we contest and we basically say why that is problematic for the youth of China and the democratic ideals which uh, it affirms to. So basically, we classify our debate in the basic concept of hedonism and nihilism, why it has become necessary for the people of China to basically take this approach, right? And I will talk about that in my second constructive. First of all, let me further uh, reaffirm my characterization in an argument, right? Now again, I have already established that in China, work uh, like again working hard and the rat rate is glorified because again it is a manufacturing club and that is what is required by the communist government right now we believe why this is problematic right because one this is unreasonable second this is exhausting 
Third, it is excruciating. And to the people who do not have the capability to work at art, it is borderline traumatic, which plays havoc on their mental health, right? Now, again, why is that so? Now, let's understand the fact of what human tendency in China and throughout the world is, right? Now, people have different abilities. Some people have tunnel vision. They can work hard. They, can, they forget everything which is around them. And they simply are focused on their work. And their success in work is their only motivation. But we don't believe that is a general case. That is restricted to a very small subpart of the Chinese population where and the more larger aspect of the Chinese population is if we remove that brainwashing aspect aside, it would be self-benefit. If I'm working hard, I need to have that level of, again, reward which I'm receiving, right? And that is the concept of hedonism, which we believe is very important to this debate. And again, let's talk about what happens when this rat race is being, uh, again, it, it, it is continuing, right? Where we aren't supporting this life rat movement. What, the, what does that lead to? It leads to people who don't even, who aren't even able to do that, uh, work that hard, are having to work that hard. And we believe that leads to mental trauma when, again, you aren't, uh, putting to societal aspirations and you and that basically leads to societal ostracization which leads to very problematic mental health problems which is very bad for the chinese population again which which links to productivity and also links to uh, again the person's mental health which is again why we talked about our stakeholder being the majority urban youth now what is an other alternative we talk about right now we believe the life at movement to basically be an extension of hedonism and nihilism what is hedonism hedonism is basically the pursuit of pressure pleasure and why is that important right because presently pleasure is being disregarded the only thing which has a caveat which the only importance is being attached is solely the fact that society wants you to work hard and you have to work hard what does hedonism do here it questions that narrative right people will start to think why is that important why do i need to work hard i'm not getting a benefit i'm simply benefiting the chinese economy which may trickle down to me but really isn't right that is why we believe hedonism is uh, an aspect because people question if i want to work that hard i need to have that narrative return which the communist party is not providing right because they don't want to provide that because that is a burden on their finances right that is why we believe it is problematic and this shift in narrative to hedonism pleasure is something which is good why nihilism why is that our second point which we basically talk about nihilism is basically the removal of uh, like again societal aspirations when difference life as the context of the motion suggests and what does that do other than removing the concept of hedonism for a second just for argument's sake it basically allows that questioning of uh, of the urban youth in the sense that oh fine like why why do we need to work that hard that just because it's a society sort of societal aspiration that is what we talk about in the first scenario right and now basically what what will the opposition come here and argue they will say that people to work because of productivity we disagree with that fact because we've already talked about how this leads to mental health mental trauma and we believe that if a a working population is working on that mental trauma what does that lead to that person has zero productivity it is only harming that person and it is also having the productive aspects of society of the country so again this is again a net loss so we don't understand why they would want to do this and the last constructive which i'm basically flag posting is the point of social movement and we can use this concept of life right as a political movement which basically talks about better remuneration on side of uh, f for the Chinese people and for the urban youth and that is something which can be used in where they will refuse to work until they get a benefit in return and that will incentivize the communist party to be less authoritarian, care more about the people and foster democratic ideals where it works for the people, by the people and with the people other than simply creating a narrative for its own geopolitical and selfish interests. With that, very very proud to oppose. Thank you. I think the Prime Minister for the speech now I invite the leader of the opposition to hear. Hello, am I audible and visible? Yep. Thank you. Hold on. I prefer POS through chat. If I don't acknowledge you around the fifth minute, you could raise it verbally then. Uh, wait. Uh, OC. Okay, then just restarting my timer. Starting my speech in three, two, one. Panel, what the government has talked about, government has stated that, uh, what the opposition has talked about, that there is a toxic world culture in China. They have agreed 
that the youth that is working they are the most capable right they can call out the system they have more leverage they are exploited and they are vulnerable and these are all the character points of characterization that we agree because these support our case what is the objective of any so this is a social movement that we are talking about right it is a fight against the toxic work, work culture as the opposition said we want the chinese government to change its ways yes now how will this change happen it will happen on our side why because as stated by the opposition when this youth which is of such paramount importance to china when this youth will stop participating in that functioning when this will youth will say no that unless and until you listen to our demands we will not do anything that is where the real change will happen that is where the chinese government will change its ways and not by simply saying that you know what we are work because what essentially the opposition has said that you you engage in dialogue right you are working for the system yet you say that you know what we don't like this system but we are still working in it now as we are important for you can you please change that instead of that what you are supposed what you should do is say that take a hard line stand that you know what unless and until you listen to our demands unless and until you erase that toxic culture we are not going to work for you and if according to the opposition if this youth is so important for china china will have to listen to it because what essentially is the life flat movement life flat movement is a social movement a social movement a reformative social movement that seeks to change the present status quo what is the status quo a status quo which involves a rat race a rat race in which this notion has been created that if you work hard only then all you have to do is you you have to achieve for a higher pay you have to achieve for a higher social status you have to die you you will die out of exhaustion you will die out of so much work but you still have to go on and on and on you have to work hard until you feel numb and the 996 culture basically 9 am to 9 pm 6 days a week right working hard or working for longer hours this hard work is glorified right this highly competitive lifestyle or involution what has it led to it has inherently led to nothing is there more happiness no there isn't is there more depression yes there is the quality of life that the opposition wants to spread that's all that's also what we want to do when you work so hard when you essentially drown yourself in work there is no quality of life there is no uh, happiness there is only depression and how is that so how is that positive that is isn't right because this pressure to succeed people are suffering from depression exhaustion overwork because this is what we are against and how will that happen by involve invoking the life flat movement right by not getting married by rejecting overtime work desk jobs it is a mindset a lifestyle and a personal choice for youth who have given up on the rat race and are staging a rebellion against the 996 so life flat does not mean just you know not doing anything or being jobless it means going at your own pace and doing what you like that's what it means right this is what lying flat is because now if you take a hard line stance that we want to what essentially will this lead to this will lead to change this is a fight against the right is that the opposition wants to change as well what will this lead to this will lead to less mental trauma that already exists it will ultimately lead to success of the social movement and talking about what furthering in further imploring on what my pm said what essentially we are doing is we stand for hedonism and nihilism when the the manufacturing of china holds they will have to agree to a ma- minimum reasonable wage because what essentially we want to incorporate a culture is that hard work is not everything you need to work for yourself you need to work for what you want to do in life because that is what hedonism is that is what nihilism is before moving on any pure all right so the question that i have is that your entire case has been contingent on only one thing that everybody and everybody in the workforce um, and primarily you assume the low strata of the workforce that they hate going to work but there are people who find satisfaction and pleasure and hedonism in working uh, i would like to ask you why have you ignored that aspect of the um, uh, case so, uh, we, so the opposition wants to deal in exceptions if that's how they intend to win this debate that is fine because we talked about the element of brainwashing right that's what china had china brainwashes people whereas the solution that we proposed proposes essentially a more utilitarian uh, from a more utilitarian aspect right what essentially we are doing is we are working towards a solution that will lead to 
benefit for the majority of the people a majority of the people that is overstressed that is has been pressured to work hard and that is not going anywhere in life because they have already reached the saturation point they have seen a generation before them getting entirely burned out that is what they have seen now talking about the stakeholders that we have in our debate we essentially have three stakeholders right the democratic values because the system this is a social movement against the authoritarian system where you have to have to have to work and the second stakeholder which we have is the chinese youth the disillusioned chinese youth who see themselves around them that even those who have achieved a higher status in life they are also depressed they don't have a good quality of life and they have been implanted they have been brainwashed that you know what you have to work hard you have there is certain societal principles that you have to achieve only then will you feel happy only then will you achieve that status of life they have been this 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 disillusioned and that is what we want to uh, argue the last uh, stakeholder for us is the societal welfare right now the regime that the china follows it is not conducive for development of the society that right? it only exists to further its own ends and that is what we are against that is why the whole that is why this traction this youth this movement is gaining traction and when something is gaining traction that means it is more it is resonating with the people right because they want that change to happen and this movement this reformative movement that through protest change will come as has been seen in history throughout the case of feminism and all the reformative movements right because what essentially we are doing is by engaging in this movement we are saying that enough is enough we have already seen an entire generation we see news every day that people are dying at desks just because they are exhausted this uh, rat race this is a response to the rat race and the only that and in the and the only solution that will ultimately lead to change something why so because it is against the rat race it is against the mental trauma it it stands for the democratic values and it is against the unreasonable and the exhausting demands of chinese people so of the chinese government and it essentially supports all the stakeholders involved you are uh, doing what the chinese youth want you are doing something for the societal welfare you are doing something for the democratic values and which is why i feel that considering all things we take this debate with that very proud purpose thank you so much thank the deputy prime minister for the speech now i invite the dialo to wrap up the opening half of the debate here here uh, hello let me both this up and ask if i can vote yep lauren clear okay so hi again i'm yashwar from now and see him your eyes to voice the first thank you Thank you, Deputy Leader of Opposition. To begin the closing half of the debate, I invite the Member of Government here. Thank you. Hi, am I audible? Yep, you're audible. All right. Um, just give me a second to sort my stuff. Um. Okay. I assume that I'm visible, but just a reminder that I prefer verbal feelings. So you can um give any in between my speech. Just unmute yourself. Starting my speech. In three, two, one. 
What all do you brought to you today? They mainly talk about how this forces China to be more democratic and give in to the people. And they talk about the impacts on the individuals, such as the mental health of these youth people, right? However, they fail to give you the actual structural barriers that keep people from accessing what they actually want and also the angles of this uh, of obtaining those kind of monetary benefits, right? Moreover, they didn't weigh to you why exactly is the uh, happiness or the mental health of the people is more important than the monetary benefits that side opposition wants to claim in this debate right so we are going to do this in um cg therefore if we are able to do so and we are able to prove to you the structural bar barriers then we are able to wait over them but before i move on to my extension a few pieces of characterization and clarification here first so what does the world in our side looks like right we do not shame people for not working as hard because people still need to earn money to sustain their lives right we, uh, it, this is mutual under both sides but the idea behind the culture of counting is not overworking and being more contented with more attainable achievements and allowing time to unwind. And this has been praised by many and inspired numerous means, right? It has been described as a spiritual or social protest movement to push for work-life balance. And it's not only, it's not about doing nothing at all and waiting to die. A person still works, but it's just uh, not overstretching themselves or trying to be on top of others in the rat race. And Jack Ma has said that it was a so-called blessing for anyone to be in the part of the so-called 996 uh, work culture, right? But with the social protest movement of Tang Ping, it has garnered huge awareness of the following. And people are agreeing to the notion of not overworking and being more content with attainable achievements. And as a result, China's authorities have issued a stern reminder to companies that such punishing work uh, schedules are in fact illegal. And China is born out of communism, which places people's welfare above of capitalism right and this thumping is a protest aligned to the principle of placing people's welfare first and not subjected to abusing work, out, uh, work hours and this is why the chinese government will, will in principle support this and this is an, an analysis that is missing coming from og in terms of analyzing why exactly they are able to garner change right and we think that this um culture is not about making uh, laziness acceptable it's not about supporting the case for not working at all and working for welfare thumping is about not overworking right and studies have shown that when an employee has work-life balance yeah. will be more capable of dealing with work stress etc oh hold on and we tell you that it's about low desire but not uh no desire at all working however we tell you that working hard under your side does not equate to getting more money out of because of the structural barriers and that i'll be explaining later moreover oh also uh, okay so now moving on to my rebuttals all told you that we are basically shaming people who work hard right however this is about a protest of the current punishing over work culture for example working 9 a.m 9 p.m a day for six uh six days a week is different right it does not prevent people from working hard but it's just stop abuses and persecution of those people who want a uh, more rest or not uh, or being slightly less productive it's targeting the culture itself from the companies but not the hardworking people and instead we think that you are shaming people who have low desires under your side because they're of the exit existing toxic culture but what we are doing under outside to pose a direct challenge to this okay moving on they also talk about the economy and so how the youth are able to garner leverage under their side given that china is already auto authoritative it's just unclear to why as to why conforming to them will uh, cause them to change right oo argues that the culture will cause the economy to decline and fail under our side. However, I want to stress that this culture is not about stopping work and not working at all, right? It's about the balanced work life of each individual. They said that overwork could be more money, but they fail to recognize that overwork will result in more burnout and reduction in productivity, right? But even in our worst case, even if you do not get like all youth to work significant less in order to like have a significant support to the culture, we still get the net benefit of letting them feel happy and less burnout, which is the Wait. most impactful. Um, impact in this debate because it affects all uh, nearly all of the youth across the board. Uh, before that, I'll take a few on. So the Open question, to... I think from uh, oh, oh. If you don't work hard, you will not get the higher salary. Why is happiness more valuable than food on the table? Okay, so I'll be explaining this in my extension right now. So in my extension, we think that the capital, capitalistic structures that exist in society bars people from accessing the idealistic end goals, including uh, monetary benefits, right? So a few pieces of characterization. In terms of capitalism, it forces people to work harder to 
be as profitable as possible because capitalism centralizes on profit and overworking is common right now because long hours translates to more profit when you get more hard work and the flaw in here is that people in power for example employees etc they are able to keep the money and the workers are uh, overworked for the same pay but not getting any better right the trickle down benefits do not work at all because the corporations people in power the rich and privileged are getting richer and richer as they keep the profits to themselves and the workers they do not necessarily get all the uh, get a significantly higher pay as well only small amounts of money go back to them right however the life tech culture here it it encourages youth to be indifferent towards life and they they go and do not like not targeting or aiming to become a billionaire in the end of the day right they're not opting for anything more than necessary they don't want a luxury life and they just want to work for a decent pay and a decent quality of life that they could uh, sustain right and why uh why we get happiness under our side, right? Because we tell you that when people do not overwork, this means to say that they're able to prioritize their time and efforts into other things that make them happy and also uh, for them to have self-actualization, right? When they are able to spend more time on these other things, like for example, um, spending time with their family and friends, this is where they are able to um, Garner, uh, obtain happiness and this what this what makes them feel happy about it, right? We think that um, the social relationship is one that is that, uh, provide them with support structures and also uh, make them feel happy about it. They are able to spend time on other things that make them happy as well, just like um, focusing on their hobbies or what they truly uh, they are truly happy about. But again, to the way, why is happiness more important than monetary benefits, right? Because monetary benefits need to sacrifice happiness. You are working towards upholding a capitalist society as something to change of society. You are tying yourselves, when China is already damn competitive, you can't um, you really conform to social norms because you are pressuring yourself to work hard, not able to gain all those monetary benefits just because you are submitting to a capitalistic um, society. I think that happiness in the end is more important because it affects your mental health. It, you can't buy happiness with money. Just because you own a mansion, that means that doesn't mean that you are happy as well. And happiness is mutually exclusive and it's on the only other side that can that we can get happiness because social pressure to work hard is a, able to reach good outcome and a better quality of life, but not overworking. Very proud to propose. Thank you. I think the speaker for the speech now I invite the number of opposition here. Okay. Uh, hi, could anyone confirm whether I'm clearly audible and visible? Yep, audible and visible. All right, cool. Uh, I repeat my preferred gender pronouns are he, him. I'll take I'll be reading POI strictly through the chat. Please do not unmute yourselves. Whoever is giving the timestamps, I need an additional timestamp for when I finish five minutes. With that, I will also be timing myself, starting my speech in three, two, one. All right, panel, I think before I move on to my constructors, it is very essential for me to summarize what the case or what the debate has been for the previous five speeches, right? I'll firstly talk about the case which has been presented by the opening government, moving on to the opening opposition as well. Firstly, what has been the problem with the case which is presented by the opening government, right? They come on and they talk about a lot of uh, principled arguments such as hedonism and nihilism, but they fail to actually look at it from a broader perspective and analyze the meaning of human life and what is the essence and what is the purpose for us to come over here which we will be talking about in our characterization itself secondly they've also talked a lot about the toxic uh, work culture and the mental health of these workers which we totally agree with this mental health and this happiness is what we also aim to achieve in our paradigm but the one problem which they face is that they fail to analyze what is the impact of this lying flat culture and not going to work, what does that impact have on these workers themselves? We're talking about the case which has been presented by the opening opposition. Personally, I believe it's a very beautiful case, but the problem is that they haven't even characterized, uh, characterized the whole problem fully and haven't given a clear mechanization, which we are here to give you, to tell you why our case actually works in the status quo. Firstly, talking about the characterization about the human life itself. I think when we're talking about such principled arguments, it is very essential to talk about the principle of identity itself. Okay, you are talking about a very utopian world where you talk about 
principles such as hedonism and nihilism where they actually work but in the present state is quite is very essential for us to realize the fact that the principle of identity is also there as human beings it is very essential for us to deal to realize our potential realize our identity have a sense of belonging and in the present state is quote the work that we do is what our identity is i show sure, i believe your fact that there is a possibility that hedonism might be the future hedonism or the pleasure seeking principle is what the identity should be in the future but in the present state is quote that identity comes from our work and that is something that you cannot negate moving on to our impacts and what our constructives are basically my, our arguments will be primarily focused on the, upon the principal argument as well as on a very pragmatic basic as well first you're talking about the stakeholder you know? how does the lying flat culture impact people on an individual on a society and an economical basis which will be the pragmatic Uh, primarily the pragmatic basis of our debate as well talking about how it affects an individual now i've already characterized how why it is so important for a human human to have that sense of identity you know what what is lying flat do right you you choose to be indifferent towards the society you choose to be indifferent towards life in general and in that case that sense of belonging as that sense of identity is defeated in the first place which is essential for your essential happiness for your mental peace which we are trying to protect here in the first place what happens when you choose not to go to work or you choose not to work to this 9 to 9 job right in the initial run sure you might feel like you have the capital to sustain yourself you might feel like okay i'm i'm not going to work I, and i feel happy i'm spending time with my family but on the long run don't you believe that that set that given get uh, that trade off between that sense of belongingness and that short lived happiness is worth taking or is it not not talking about the society in general right here our characterization also stands to because we need to realize the fact that as human beings we are social animals right we need a sense of belongingness we need a sense of empathy we need a sense of interaction we need a sense of relatability to the society and in the present state is go what is the society mean to us right a sense of belongingness is so essential that if you go on to have an indifferent attitude towards life it breaks the very social fabric of our society right now which again affects the mental health of the people which we were trying to protect in our first argument itself now talking about a very pragmatic basis right the opening opposition the opening government ka comes in and say that okay not working will potentially may or will potentially force the chinese government to make changes to this toxic world culture which is a very utopian idea which doesn't really stand in the present status quo but what we fail to understand is to we don't really realize how the economy works itself right it works on a system of supply and demand once you choose to not go to work once you choose not to work for a 9 to 9 job that still doesn't mean that you won't require the same amount of food to sustain yourself right that demand is still present there and who's and on on which sector of the society does that onus to fulfill that supply comes right it comes on the marginal people this is why it creates a sort of a sense of social divide lying flat or not going to work is a rich man's problem right they have the monetary capital to sustain themselves but that doesn't work for a middle aged man who has to sustain the other kids who has to sustain his wife as well this rich man's problem it creates an economic divide which entirely puts the onus on the marginalized community it creates a divide which affects the mental health itself which has been the primary stakeholder for this debate itself talking about the democratic ideas i mean that's sort of ridiculous you're talking about china over here and you believe that there is a possibility that not going to work will introduce democratic ideas which doesn't really stand which has no chance of standing in the sheets of the panel today now talking about the i just extend the economy further right let's look at it from a long run perspective right once you don't go to work they but that economy doesn't stop for that right there is labor shortage there is a shortage for jobs people do need money eventually to sustain themselves and for that eventual happiness which we are aiming for what does that do that that amount of labor shortage it transcends to a higher demand for that labor, for that one particular job and in that case you have to work for the you have to work for the same hours but for a menial amount of wage how does that equate to this happiness which they're talking about now moving on to the case which was presented by the opening opposition itself like the counterfactual which you want to present to you here today we understand the fact that there is a sense of toxicity in the work culture the rat race doesn't benefit anyone but it is essential for us to understand how do we negate that right do we just deviate from a from it from a problem uh, whatsoever by by stating the fact that okay we'll just not go to work from tomorrow or we just start to start having an indifferent attitude towards life it says that's not how it works in the real sense you need a sense of representation you need a sense of voice how does that work you 
you go through the politicized uh, uh, channels of change not go just going out there and trying to bring a political change which not only creates a social divide but also impacts the rich and practically every every single person in the society how does how does that do any good to the workforce of china is something which we fail to understand but talking about the counterfactual extending it a bit further how does that how does representing your point of views in a more politicized way help actually help it it actually puts pressure on the on the government to make changes not going to work it doesn't really make a difference because the labor shortage which we were talking about and the labor intensive industry that will still be there that shortage that toxicity that uh, rat race will still be there because that economic divide is not going anywhere in your paradigm to summarize everything which i've told you today i think it is very essential for us to realize the fact that a uh, sense of identity is very essential for the mental health of a human being secondly when we talk about our constructors about how it impacts the individual itself the social side itself and on a very pragmatic basis the economy itself and how it outweighs all the benefits which they've talked about how these cons and how these impact on the mental health of these workers itself outweigh the benefits which the uh, government side has talked about we really we really think that we take this debate today very easily with that i wrap up my speech very very proud to oppose Thank you, Speaker, for that speech. To conclude the side of government, I invite the government here. Thank you, Speaker. Can I confirm that I'm audible and visible? Yep, audible and visible. All right, uh, can you spare some time? I'll be taking mobile POIs at the fifth minute mark, so do not POI before that. Speech starting in three. Two, one. In the capitalistic society we live in today, especially a country like China and the 996 work culture there, just because you work harder doesn't mean that you get to a better place in life, which is what the entire outbench just asserted in today's debate, right? So a few ways before I move on to my clashes. So why do we take on, on why do we take over OG in today's debate, right? They tell us about nihilism, mental health, and I'm wanting to build like a democratic society and prioritizing social welfare, but they did not explain to us why the Chinese government has incentive, uh, incentives to change the system and how this life like that culture will actually lead to a more impactful outcome, right? They lose out on this because they failed to illustrate the scenario while my M my MG have already told you how we do it, right? So second thing, they have they didn't explain the actual problems that Chinese youths are facing today as well. Well, my MG already told you that they are not even getting more pay if they work harder because they are living in this capitalistic society, right? They're just only pushing uh, and working, contributing to this economy while the rich people are getting richer, while the Chinese youths are getting just poor and poorer, right? Especially the, the workers, the majority of the workers, which is well, vulnerable actors that we are trying to protect into this debate, right? Thirdly, they give us no way as to why uh why the life flat culture is more important than actually pushing for this uh capitalistic society and upholding it, right? Now to OO. They just tell us that they will have a better quality of life if they work harder, right? But it's untrue. As my MGS already told you, right? Capitalism doesn't lead to any happiness and not and it doesn't even give you more pay just because you work harder, right? I've already told you that working harder does not translate to more pay, regardless of what the opposition thinks it is, right? So how would that even lead to better quality of life? Second thing you yeah. is uh, I'll tell you at five. Second, second thing they tell us is that you have a better workforce, and that is what CEO has also said as well. That they want to uphold the uh, the the economy, right? Because they're afraid that if suddenly everyone supports this life uh, life like culture, suddenly people will be striking. Wouldn't want to come to work at all, right? I'll be explaining to you later on, like what's wrong with this entire concept and what actually is the life like culture, right? They assume, they make they make this assumption that working hard will lead to better pay and better quality of life while not explaining the actual process to getting there, right? CEO does the same mistake, but it tells us uh, something else is that they will feel like a principle of identity, a sense of belonging if they work hard. I still do not see how that materialized and even if it does, why it is more important than the person personal, uh, the individual happiness, right, of not overworking themselves until they are fatigued and they're tired, right? So now onto the clarification. 
what is actually the life fact culture? Since all teams in today's debate seems to just not understand it very well, right? In the motion itself, in this info slide, right? It says that you're just rejecting societal pressure to work hard. Just because you're not working hard does not mean that you're not working at all, right? If you think working automatically means that you're working hard, then that is a systemic problem that we are trying to solve today, right? What is life flat culture? We want you to have a work-life balance, right? You're still going to have a decent quality of life, even if it's like not just because of the capitalist, even if you don't actually have a decent quality of life, that is because of the capitalistic society that we're in today, right? And that is not going to be better under opposition, and even worse, because you're doing more and overworking, but you're not actually getting more in return, right? So when we're uh, we are pushing for a life like culture, we, we mean that you're going to still work, but just enough to actually get on with your life, not trying to be uh, having a luxury life because that just won't happen in the first place, right? We've already accepted the fact that we are living in a capitalistic society and if you're just going to uh, keep uh, telling people to work hard, work hard, work hard and that you get something in return, you're just telling them a lie, right? And what does that do? Make the, the people richer, right? To make the rich people richer but you're not actually protecting the most vulnerable actors, right? So, uh, two questions in today's debate, right? On mental health and happiness and like the quality of life and the economy to some extent, right? So first class, mental health. So which side actually better achieves it, right? On government, we tell you that since we are prioritizing work-life balance, we're still going to prioritize some, uh, some time on our mental health and not trying to force like 12 hours per day, six uh, six days a week doing all the work, right? You're basically leaving no time for yourself and you're only just working, working, working. We don't see how mental health will be uh, good or even existing kind of like uh, side opposition, right? Yes, I'll take a few, right? Openings or closings? Uh, opening. If you want the economy to fail because you have no intention of working hard, why will the Chinese government listen to your movement? Okay, first off, they keep telling us, right? Opposition keeps telling us that the economy will fail if people work less. Why is why would that happen, right? You're still working. You're not suddenly just like telling people that uh do not come to work and then like uh on, never work in like when you never work, right? Well, we fill out this gap by explaining to you that the social protest movement of life flat has already garnered huge awareness and following, right? The people have already acknowledged the fact that this 996 work culture is very toxic and you're not getting more pay out of it, right? You keep telling people that like work hard and that you'll get better quality of life. We have already disproved that fact. And even more so, we've told you that like the economy, it won't be suddenly like tumbling down just because like the working population has now decided that they are going to prioritize their own mental health over some um, some ridiculous work culture, right? So the the Chinese the China's authority has already issued like a reminder to companies that these ridiculously long work schedules are illegal, right? This proves that the efficacy of the culture, the life fact culture, that it actually works, right? We have already mechanized the narrative for you, which OG has failed to do, right? We also pointed out to you that China is literally a communist communist country, right? They prioritize the people's welfare over capitalism, right? They never, uh, opposition never proved to us how the economy will suddenly fail because people decide to work less, but not even like quit their work at all, right? Just because they have a work, healthy work schedule, if the, if the economy fails at that, then that is a structural problem, right? But then we've already proven to you how the life like culture actually motivates our people and to prioritize their mental health. And that is far more important than whatever monetary benefits you can hope to bring. But does it actually bring because you're in a capitalistic society, right? So now I'm uh, very never be proud to propose. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Of that speech to wrap up the debate. I invite the opposition representative. All right, uh, so just reiterating the fact that I won't appreciate that you unmute yourself.
to ask POIs, uh, mention on the chat uh, whenever any side uh, side has the government side has POIs, I will recognize you by chat and take the POI if I have to, that sort of time. Um, apart from that, I'll give you a content before I start. All right. Um, starting my speech in three, two, one. Panel, it becomes very important for us today as the metric to judge this debate uh, to weigh the harms of the life flat movement against its benefit. We, we side closing opposition has mechanized the impact and harms of the life flat movement in three ways. A, on individuals, B, on the economy, and C, on the society as a whole. Now, as the opposition today, uh, opposition whip today, what will I do? I will do three things for you today. I will integrate the rebuttals for the government bench, for the government bench. Um, in my speech B, I will weigh the harms of supporting this movement, uh, movement against the menial pros it has, if it does. Uh, and C, I will tell you how the major stakeholders are more likely to be better off on our side of the paradigm. Now, the sides argued only, um, now majorly till now, the sides argued only one side of the debate, which is stopping going to work. However, um, my member of uh, opposition extended our positive case, keeping in mind how being indifferent, how the uh, life flat movement also includes being indifferent towards life in general and how having low desires in life in general has severe harms. All right. Now, panel, uh, this, now panel, this on, uh, the side government, the government bench, there has been a clear problem solution mismatch today. All right, I'll tell you how. Now, the government sides have conveniently assumed and that entire case has been contingent on one thing. They've assumed that people hate going to work and that everyone in China is exploited. Everyone in basically China is exploited in their workplace scenario. Now, moreover, there are, however, we tell you that there are people who find pleasure in work. Now, even keeping that aside, even if even if I take the best case where people are tired with the rat race, the life flat movement is not the solution to this problem. Because suddenly youth starting being indifferent to life and starting having low desires in life will not get them better work culture. They will not uh, they will not stop getting exploited in China. They failed to mechanize. Uh, they failed to mechanize and provide us the hows and whys of this uh, assertion that they provided in the entire case. However, we told you that how the life flat theory is not a choice. It is a luxury that only the rich can afford. The oppressed, the lower strata of the workforce does not have the luxury to stop working because they have to support their families. Now let's further mechanize this uh, to um, show you how it impacts the economy and the poor workers again. Now, as my member of opposition told you, when rich youth stops contributing to the society, two things happen. What are these two things? A, the food and the needs that they have remain constant. The people who have chosen uh, to go for the work, life flat worker, their needs remain constant. And B, their contribution to the supply chain stops and that gap has to be fulfilled by the poor workforce, which increases the pressure on the workforce, which is already, let's say, exploited and overworked. Here, now panel clearly here, the workforce, which the government has been rooting for in, in their entire speeches, their, to their surprise, is miserable on their side of the pa paradigm. So there's no chance for this argument to stand on your sheets today, panel. Moving on, panel, now in this case, uh, now on that, on their case, the, the individuals basically being youth, um, being the major stakeholders of the debate today. Let us take their best case, where the youth lies flat and stops working in, um, in their life what negative impacts it has on the youth. I will tell you. A, um, the major case of the government bench has been about how it will uh, provide pleasure and happiness to the uh, youth who have been like working their asses off in the entire, uh, in, in their paradigm. I'll tell you, uh, this has been the primary ag argument from government bench today, but I will tell you how it has no chance to stand on the sheet. Um, they spoke about hedonism and the mere pursuit of pleasure, but individuals, Primary, principally, if we see individuals won't value pleasure and happiness. The metric to pleasure is pain and struggles. Life is a contrast of happiness and struggles. So if you don't have that sort of stress at workplace, if you don't have that sort of uh, pain during the work, you won't even value pleasure. So having a utopian world, having a pain, having a place where they only have, uh, having a place, having a world where they don't have that sort of uh, stress, they, individuals, the youth will stop valuing and experiencing 
pleasure in the first place. So there's no chance for that argument to stand. B, we tell you how the youth's mental health will be negatively impacted, which is to say people don't just work for productivity or monetary benefit. This is act, it's, um, definitely not true. People work to engage their 24 hours of the day with work. A person works to go out and meet with people because um, as my member of opposition told in uh, his characterization that how it is important for human beings because they are inherently social creatures to go out and engage with people. So the primary objective of going to work and going out in society is not monetary gain of productivity. It is to engage yourself with people because panel, it is very important to understand that if a person, according to the life flat culture, if that person stops going to work, becomes indifferent to life, what will this lead to? This will lead to them being left alone to themselves. Now, for how long can we stay alone doing absolutely nothing? This is exactly how people slip into depression. So even if even if they were arguing for the mental well-being of the youth, they, are, they have instead argued. We have showed you how they've instead argued in favor of creation of these mental health issues and in favor of creation of this depression. So this is how we tell you that... Uh, uh, what harms uh, this is how i've told you how the major clashes of the debate and the major arguments that uh, the um, government bench presented has no chance of standing in the sheets of the panel uh, uh, sheets of the adjudicators today and we told now um, i also told you how it negatively impacts an individual we also told you uh, how it negatively impacts the economy in terms of the entire pressure shifting to the uh, in terms of how the uh, we, we also told you the impact on the economy in terms of how um, the uh, demand of resources, the demand of uh, needs and wants will not stop. What will stop when people go on this life flat movement is the supply. The supply will stop. It will create a work, work labor shortage, which will further uh, um, amplify, which will further amplify the sort of uh, pressure and the oppression and the overworking the workforce is uh, support, uh, supporting. We told you that. We also told you how it will impact a negative, uh, how it will negatively impact the society as a whole. We told you how it is important for people to go out, how society, uh, it is important for people to have that sense of belongingness to the society, for society to function as a whole. If people start being, uh, start having low desires, if people start being uh, inherently indifferent to life and start practicing nihilism, the fancy word that opposite, uh, that government came in through without providing any mechanization to those, uh, the society will stop functioning as a whole because in, it is important for the society to have human interaction it is important for the society to have that sort of work culture have that sort of interaction between human beings so if people will have uh, start uh, start following the life flat culture the society the societal fabric will collapse as a whole so panel uh, so, so panel, the closing opposition came here and rebutted all the arguments presented by the other sides. Uh, we told and we extended a positive case covering a wider aspect of the debate. Hence, our paradigm, all stakeholders are more likely to be better off on our side of the house, which is why we believe that we clearly take this one today with that very, very proud to oppose. Thank you. Thank you everyone for the speeches. Uh, is there a break room? Where do judges live? Right? Uh, we'll see.